highlighting and annotating by Sarah Clues, Normandale Community College. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons license. Highlighting and annotating. How can it help me? How do I do it? Today we'll learn about highlighting and annotating, its benefits, how to do it, how to use highlighting and annotating to prepare for a test or discussion, how to use highlighting and annotating to find evidence to support a point, and how to adapt to a digital environment. When you use highlighting and annotating, things you read get interesting. Why should you highlight and annotate? Won't it take longer? Isn't it a waste of time? Let's talk about the benefits of highlighting and annotating. A lot of people read quickly, but have no idea what they just read. Uh, does this sound familiar? If you finish a reading in five minutes, but have no idea what you just read, it's not really a win, is it? Why highlight and annotate? Here are some ways that highlighting and annotating can help you. First, it keeps you awake. Don't underestimate the value of staying awake while you study. Most people don't get much reading done in their sleep. It also increases your comprehension and retention. That means your understanding and memory of what you read. Highlighting and annotating makes you more active. You become more like a superhero in charge of your own learning and less like a rock that's totally passive. Highlighting and annotating can also increase your interest in the reading. Once in a while, never in this class, of course, you may get assigned something in which you have no interest. Believe it or not, writing on the text can make the text a lot more interesting. Another benefit of highlighting and annotating is that it simplifies review, saving you time later. When you go to write an essay or study for a test on a given text, if you can zoom in immediately on the important parts, which you marked previously, you'll be in great shape to find quotations to support your points or review key ideas for a test. What kind of student will you be? It's up to you what kind of student you'll be. Yes, highlighting and annotating may take more than five minutes, but it's a key strategy for understanding and remembering text. Now let's talk about how to do it. Here's a hint, have fun. How should you highlight? Students often wonder how much of the text they should highlight. A good rule of thumb is to highlight 10 to 25% of the text, but this may vary based on your purpose. What should you highlight? Start by highlighting main ideas and key vocabulary. Highlight word by word instead of sentence by sentence. By that I mean, don't highlight a whole sentence. Pick out only the important words in a sentence and highlight just those words. This will save you time later when you review your highlighting. If you only highlight the keywords in a sentence, you won't have to slog through a lot of extra words later. It will also push you to make sense of the sentence when you read it the first time. Another recommendation is to use a scheme. This is where it gets fun. The scheme is up to you. For an example, you might make main ideas yellow, sub-ideas pink, and vocabulary green. When I began requiring students to create a color coding scheme, I noticed that their test scores improved. Why? It forced them to think about the text more while they read it, which increased their understanding. A final suggestion is to read a paragraph first and then highlight it. This is especially useful if the text is difficult. You may not know what's important in a paragraph until you've finished reading it. However, if the text is easier, you may be fine highlighting as you read. Don't use black highlighter like the CIA. That is a joke. Okay, moving on. How to annotate. Let's talk about how to annotate. Annotating is writing on the text itself with a pen or pencil. Here are some suggestions about how to annotate. Start by skimming the text, looking at the title, then writing your predictions. Before you even start reading, 
What do you think the text will be about? Also, before you start reading, write questions you hope the text will answer. A great strategy is to take the bold headings and turn them into questions. This activates your mind and tells you to look for those answers while you read. Another suggestion is to read the whole paragraph first, then annotate. One of my previous students put his own spin on the suggestion and read and highlighted a whole page. And then when he finished that page, he would go back and write his annotations. I ran into him the following semester and he was still using that strategy and getting A's in all of his classes. Another suggestion is to condense main points. For each paragraph, write down a short topic or main idea in the margin. A great way to make the text more interesting is to find things you agree or don't agree with. Do deep thinking and write down your thoughts. Pretend you're having a conversation with the author. Also, define key vocabulary words. If there's a word you don't know in the title of the article or in a bold heading, definitely look it up. If a word keeps coming up in a text and it is preventing you from understanding it, definitely look it up. However, you don't need to look up every single word you don't know. Try to make a guess as to what the word means from the rest of the sentence. Use symbols in your annotation, such as asterisks, parentheses, and stars. Personally, I like to star the main idea or thesis of essays. Also, you can use numbers. You can use transitions to help you figure out what key ideas are. If you see first, second, third, mark those ideas in the text with numbers. They are a multiple choice question waiting to happen. After you've gotten the key ideas, write text to self connections like, oh, the writer said he never lends out his books because after he writes on them, it's too personal to let other people read them. That makes me think of my own journal, which I never let anyone read, and which is why I almost killed my sister when she read it. A text-to-text -text connection might be that the author does not lend out his annotated books, which are like a journal. The, the author, Oscar Wilde, said he always brings his diary with him when he travels, so he has something interesting to read. A text-to-world connection is that with Google and other technology tracing, everything we do online is public in some sense. So you don't really have a lot of privacy these days. But if you can keep people from reading your annotated books, at least that's private. That would be a text-to-world connection. A final point is to pay attention to the author's word choice and the emotions that those word choices reveal. For example, if the author says that FEMA's response to Hurricane Katrina was pathetically slow, you can tell the author's angry due to the word pathetically. You might highlight the word pathetically and write angry. Here's a sample annotation. It's from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. You can see that the unfamiliar vocabulary words have been circled and defined. In a text like this, it's really important to figure out what the words mean because the language is from the late 1500s and early 1600s. On the left side of the page, there's a description of what's going on and there's a lot of annotation. With a text this complex, that's very appropriate. The reader has also starred metaphors, like when Capulet insults someone by calling him green sickness carrion or decaying flesh. Then the reader stars another metaphor, the ultimate insult, someone calling someone a baggage. Don't try that one at home. How can you adapt your highlighting and annotating to prepare for a test or discussion? Hint, you will need your brain. To prepare for a multiple choice test, identify key ideas and major supporting details. As I said before, number lists within the text and make sure you can explain how the ideas fit together. Another pro tip is to write sample test questions for yourself and of course, see if you can answer them. A lot of people focus on the parts of the, te the text they understand and skip over the parts they don't understand. This is actually the opposite of what you should do. Focus on making, a, making sense of the parts of the text that confuse you. Ask your professor for help with those parts that are confusing during class or office hours. Or try rereading the parts that confuse you. Or Google more information 
to see if you can understand concepts the author might assume that you already know. Preparing for a discussion or to write an essay is slightly different than preparing for a multiple choice test. Make sure that you can identify the author's thesis or main idea and identify your own thoughts about it. Do you agree or disagree? Why? Also, consider ideas the instructor has emphasized in class. They may give you a clue as to what the discussion will be about or what the essay prompt will be. Identify the major supports. Identify why you agree or disagree with the author. Make connections, text to text, text to self, or text to world. And practice writing about the text before class. If you're writing an essay, how can you find evidence to support a point? Finding evidence may be necessary if you're writing an essay about a text or preparing for a discussion. There are several suggestions that may help you. First, be sure to understand the main idea of the text you're reading. Reread it if necessary. One of my old coworkers said she was assigned every science te text that she was assigned in college, she read twice. Also, avoid taking quotations out of context. Use quotations, paraphrases, and or summaries to establish your credibility. Look, an expert agrees with me. Or somebody's research proved the point I just made. See, I'm not crazy, I'm credible. You could also use quotations, paraphrases, and or summaries to illustrate a general point with a specific example. The last thing I'll cover in this video is how to adapt highlighting and annotating to a digital environment. Although most students prefer having physical books and printouts of shorter text, the reality is that sometimes reading for classes needs to be done online. How can you highlight and annotate in a digital environment? Here are some ideas. First, if possible, you could copy and paste text into Word or Google Docs, change the font color, highlight, or write notes in another color font. You could also take notes on digital content in a notebook. My student tutor recommended a program called Read and Write for Google Chrome. You'd need to download the program, and once you do, it enables you to copy and paste important text and write down your own thoughts about it. A final idea is to print out e-text and write on them. Are you convinced? Here's one final thing I'd like to show you. For privacy reasons, I couldn't show you actual student text, but these are the amount of highlighting and annotation that students did for an open book final exam where they had a week to read and prepare a text, then they took a test on the reading. This is about what the highlighting and annotation of a student who received an A looked like. As you can see, there's a fair amount of highlighting and annotation, actually not highlighting, but underlining and annotation, and that reflects a significant amount of work. This is what the highlighting and annotation of a student who received a C on the final exam looked like. As you can see, there's some highlighting, but no annotation. And this is what the text of a student who failed looked like. Clearly, the student didn't do much preparation before the final exam. Now it's your turn to try highlighting an annotation. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful.